Hi, I'm Rob from No Limit Engineering, and today we're going to show you how we test a chassis for its flex. And uh, we want to start doing that in all the chassis that we run across so that there's a comparable number. So a lot of talk, people talk about how they make their chassis better or, you know, than somebody else, but there's no way to compare. So we're going to try to set a standard for that, and we're going to do that with a simple test. So this is our, our chassis we're going to use today. It's a 56 Ford. Up in the front, we installed one of our Wide Ride IFS uh, kits. That comes with boxing plates that start from the core support cross member and make it back uh, to the cab mount region. The next thing we installed on this chassis was one of our X-Frame kits. And this has a ported rail doubler that stiffens it up and also has the X kit with a trans cross member in place and the drive shaft loop. As we get towards the back of the X kit, this cross member was a factory piece from the F100, it had to be removed and then we fit it and put it back in. Then we get to the region of this step notch that we put in to make the truck extra low. When we do step notches they have two cross members, a high and a low, where the factory rails only had one in this region. And in the back of this chassis it's pretty stock except for the very rear cross member has been flipped upside down and that gives us extra room for a fuel tank. Okay, so to be able to compare flex from one chassis to another, we need a standardized test. So we've spent some time thinking about it and how you would go about it and where all the pressure points are. And we came up with this. So you can test this method at home or anybody else can. And hopefully we'll get some other manufacturers to test the same way and we'll have some comparable numbers. So the last thing on the body up in the front that's really mounted is the core support. So we have some jack stands just in front of the core support cross member. And our initial setup is we want to make sure that we're really level side to side in the front. And then we work our way back. We want the chassis to be level front to back. So both rails you know, are, and stands are set to make sure that that is the case. And then to hold the back of the chassis in place, um, we decide that we would use a spec that is 20 inches behind the axle center line for our stands to hold the chassis still. And this is the place we're going to be fixed, so we want it nice and level, and we're going to show you how we're going to hold it still, but there's some other ways you can do it. So remember that our jack stands are just in front of the core support mounts and 20 inches behind the axle center line. Okay, now we're actually going to test for the flex up in the front of the chassis. That's where the motor and all the mass is, and that's where all the twisting starts from when you go into a corner. So we want to hold the back of it still. So we just put a piece of uh, you know big rectangle stop across the top of the rails, right on top of our jack stands. And we needed a way to hold it still, so we brought in our forklift and loaded the forks down on it. Now you could put a pallet back here with a bunch of weight, but I imagine you probably need about a thousand pounds of downforce to hold this steady. All right, now as I said, we're gonna actually test for the twist up in the front. So we had our jack stands placed just in front of the core support cross member. We're going to remove uh, this stand, basically because that's where we have the room in our shop. It doesn't matter which one you, which side you test with, driver or passenger. And then we're going to clamp a bar across the top, and what we're going to use is a 10-foot bar for leverage. Uh, and then we're going to weight the bar, and we can see how much it drops in both angle and in inches at the end of the bar. All right, we're now just about ready to do our test. Now we've got a couple things prepped. You can see we've taken out the jack stand under this corner and we're holding the chassis up with the jack because just the weight of some of the suspension and the brakes and whatnot, we're going to want to make it sink just a little bit. But we want to get a true number. So we have our 10 foot uh, piece of material. This is just some 2x3 that we put up right. It's 10 foot long on the money. And we have this side here just flushed up with the outside edge of the frame put a level on it and adjusted the jack until we're close to level. And then to get a, a starting point, we just come out here and measure right to the ground and it's 29 and a quarter. So that's going to be our starting measure. Okay, so as we talked about, we want to set a standard for this. So on the end of our 10 foot post, we're going to put a 100 pound weight. And we wanted to prove or show you that we're actually going to use 100 pounds. We got our bucket full of some spare parts and we're going to set it on our shipping scale here and we are right on the money at 100 pounds. 
Okay, so we got our 100 pound weight over here. Remember our 10 foot leverage bar? Just from the weight of the bar itself, uh, we got a little flex out of the chassis. And we measured that here at 28 and a quarter. So it's dropped about one inch. Remember that's over a 10 foot span. So now I'm gonna hang the weight on it. I gotta get a good grip on my bucket here to pick it up. And there it goes. So to measure out past my bucket, I gotta clamp on a little straight edge. And we'll come back here and you can see the bucket hanging. It's not touching the floor. And we'll measure down. And we're just a little above 24 and a quarter. So I just steady it there a little bit. So if we started at 29 and a quarter and we're at 24 and a quarter, it's fell five inches. Now that's over a 10 foot span. So we're really talking about maybe an inch at the front frame horn itself with a thousand pound load on it, which is pretty good, I think.